May the 13th, 1988, uh, I worked the evening shift, 4 to 12 shift, and I was a shift captain. Uh, that particular afternoon, I uh, didn't feel like really going to work. I had a toothache, and I had some other health issues. And it's my job as a captain, uh, I suppose, to go to the food service and monitor the food service. So they would feed from 5 o'clock p.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. So I went into food service. And uh, whenever they came in, inmates' population started coming in to eat supper. I noticed they were real, very quiet, quieter than usual. And that made me believe that something wasn't right. Call a duty officer, and I got the chief security came in. And we started a, an investigation, trying to find out to see who was actually, actually involved. The uh, so-called Aryans, they decided they didn't want to leave it alone. So they went and got their groups of people and got together. And we got our group of people to go make our arrests, and uh, they refused. And that's when one of the ringleaders of the uh, hostage, I mean, one of the, one of the ringleaders decided to uh, to uh, take a hostage. And in that central area was our central control at the time. Uh, we, call it, we call it the count desk. And they tried to come back in where we was at and take over that particular area. And uh, I wouldn't let them in. Mm -hmm. So I was helping holding the door. Physically holding the door. Physically holding the door because they had a larger group pushing on that one side, and they opened the doorway, and uh, they taken over. They came mm. in with a group of them, and that's when they put the knives to our throats. Mm. The other inmate said, uh, just tell us, give us a word, and we'll take over. And I said, no. If I do this, I said, we have a bloodbath, and we have a bigger problem. Ain't nobody hurt right now. So they backed off. And then on my backside, one of the inmates came up my backside with a knife and threw it to my throat. And they had put knives on the other officers, and then we was escorted to another area. And I didn't sleep for them three days that they held me hostage. I exercised as much as I could and tried to stay focused, concentrate on what to do next, use my listening skills, use all the skills I had, and I put. I sat there and concentrated on everything of the resources that I needed to to help end this before somebody get killed, or if I could end it, if we could end it. And I had opportunities to, to escape. I had opportunities to make a stand, defend myself at times, but I didn't want to go out like that. We had other people. If I tried anything, kill him. If, if, the, if Captain McGee tried anything, kill him. And I, used to, I heard that when I was in my cell, the cell they had me in, and I could hear them, they plotted on what they're going to do before I come out. The inmates was exhausted, tired. The ringleader came down to where I was at. I was in the hallway of a segregated housing unit, DU, and he put his, I was sitting in a chair, so he put the knife down between my legs. He said, this is all I got. This is all I got is my word to you. We're tired, and when we leave, we're going to give up to, uh, that Monday morning at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock a.m., no earlier, uh, no later. 9 o'clock, we want you to be present, and we want you to go out, and you want you to be the one to tell them. Tell them that it's over. I went back up there the next day, and uh, they released them. 